like tall buildings as the chemicals they take us higher. The night's young and it's just begun as she puts her hand in mine. We wanna chase the night. Hello and welcome to Crime and Justice. I'm back. I had a couple of nods off because I wasn't feeling too well. So I thought, I feel a bit better today. So I'm giving a live now because this is, it's Halloween, it's you know, October 31st. And I've got my grandchildren coming over tonight. Just for a few hours, but I thought I'd rather go live now and then I don't have to worry about ushering them out the door. Time to go now, Kitty Wings. Bye. Nice seeing you. Bye. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I thought I'd go live now. If I do get, if they go early enough, then I might come live tonight. But I want to do a video. And the video I do will not be put on X and it will not be put on YouTube. I'll put it on my Discord account and then just put the link in my community tab on YouTube and on my X account and on my Facebook account. Because I don't want any knocks on the door by the local bobbies. Anyway. Today, we're looking at the Elijah Vu, whose body was found, I believe, the 7th of September, in some, uh, I'm not sure what sort of area, I'd say brush area, tree, 
right tree area, but the owner of the land was just going around checking his land, getting it ready for the hunting season. And you came across this poor little boy. Anyway, so I missed the call team the other day for Katrina Bear. So I've got it. So we're going to be looking at that. But I was watching a video earlier. Mm. Hold on. <coughs> um, sorry about that. I was watching a video earlier. And it said something like, hold on, I'll see if I can pull it off. Hmm. It says, Eliza Vu dead, mother devastated, attorney says. <laughs> yeah, right. As if she didn't know. Really? You look at the picture, right? I'm going to pull up a picture of the mother and the father. Uh, boyfriend, I should say, not mother and father. And I can't, you can't really call her a mother. Them eyes. Those eyes are dead. They're dead. Right. So, don't tell me she didn't know. Anyway, I didn't do my intro like I normally do, so I'm going to put this up so that you can also see this. You must be 18 years and older. Everything said is allegedly, and in my opinion, please do your own checks. If you're going to leave me a comment, I welcome comments. But can you not put a creator's name, full creator's name in? Like, shorting it down, you know what I mean? If you want to use a creator's name. So... I don't have creators' names now in chat. So let's go back to this little boy. So, um, I thought you tell me she can, she, she's devastated. Yeah, she's devastated because she knows she could be charged with the possible murder or unaliving, as I should say, on YouTube. She even told Jesse Vang not to cooperate with the police, not to talk to the police. What is that saying? Uh, don't tell him anything. Yeah? Guilty as hell. Anyway, she pleads not guilty. So we're going to have a look at, first of all, I just want to see this, right, see, but it says, Elijah Vu's mother, devastated yet right. Well done, well done. I was getting all tangled up. And so, that's the one we'll be going to be watching. But I just want to go over this as well. This is an interview by Two Rivers Police give update on Elijah Vu's case after remains found. So this is just an update by the two rivers police after his body was found. Uh, it's sadness, but relief. Um, it's obviously not the outcome we wanted, uh, but it does bring bring closure to finally finding Elijah. Uh, and now it just comes to the part of, of uh, you know, talking about what happened and proving what happened. 
are you and I and I know you can't talk specifically yeah. about the investigation, but close to move would you consider it closing the investigation? I mean it's always probably gonna be open, but are you close to some sort of resolution? And then I guess as people would say charges, I guess is yeah, me. anything related to charges that'll come from the DA's office. Um DCI, um, our department obviously, FBI. Uh, all working together still on this case, working on the investigation, working very closely with the DA. Uh, so it'll really be up to them as far as when they announce any charges. Okay. I, what do you have to say to that hunter, the property owner who found found Elijah's remains? Well, I think it just goes to what we've been saying for the longest time that, you know, even though, you know, people had checked their properties initially or areas they, they uh, you know, have gone through for whatever reason, um, check them again. We say that all along because um, as, as any of us know, when you're looking for anything, uh, it's easy to miss things. Uh, and with change in seasons, with um, all the different things that can happen in the environment. Um, we, were, we were hoping, hoping I guess is, is a word that we don't want to use in the situation, but hoping at least we'd find some sort of evidence. Um, obviously we found Elijah through, through, through this hunters uh, uh, being very alert uh, and knowing his surroundings. So that's exactly what we were, what we were hoping for. How are they doing? That, so. And then you also said you guys, you had dreams, some of you had dreams, does that, that stuff continue or is it? Um, I think it's all individual based, uh, for sure. Um, I know myself has always been I'm thinking about it every in some capacity. Um, the next step, um, you know, I think we all kind of felt like, you know, once the piece to you, but it kind of doesn't because you're still looking towards the next thing. You know, what's the next piece of this puzzle we have to solve? Because originally it was um, we want to find, find Elijah. Right. Now I'm sure it's probably justice for Elijah. Right? Correct. That, Correct. Yep. What's been sort of the perception or the mood around the community? Um, I think the community, uh, you know, throughout this, they've been very, very supportive. They really have. Um, I think overall, uh, the reactions I've seen um, have been, uh, you know, relief once again. I think in a lot of ways, same ways as the department, you know, relief, but everybody's kind of holding their breath what comes next. Everybody kind of wants to see what happens next. Um, and we all want to see what that resolution will be as well. Hard for you guys, no, the caretaker are. Is it easier knowing that they are locked up in bombs and being out in the I can't count myself that. And are you still leading the investigation? Is Two Rivers Police still leading the investigation? Or is DCI now, or? Yeah, I mean, DCI uh, has been essentially in the lead uh, with us kind of concurrently, but really DCI has been doing uh, a lot of the investigative work with our investigator. Um, once again, as a team that we work with county work with FBI at the same time. Um, but yeah, any, okay. as far as the investigative team themselves, it's been uh, DCI and us. And are you close to sending stuff to the DA for potential charges? Can't you... comment on that. Can't comment on that. What, I guess, are you, are you still collecting evidence? Uh, some evidence uh, or something they believe is evidence, definitely contact contact us. Um, at this at this point, you know, we're continuing our investigation with what we have, and, and um, we've been doing that, you know, even before finding Elijah. Is there anything people should maybe be looking for? for and, uh, you know, you're asking for a ring camera. I mean, are there specific areas or things that you maybe are looking to know? No, looking nothing for? specifically at this point, uh, but if something uh, were to come up, somebody to remember something, somebody sees something on the video, by all means, bring it forward. Does that stuff still exist, video stuff? I don't know what the... Typically not. Typically much sure lifespan, depending on the system they're using, but I don't know. But, uh, I mean, there were individuals up until we found them that were still coming forward with potential evidence. Um, most of those situations, Situations did not equate to anything as far as actual evidence, um, but the fact they brought them forward, you know, was worthwhile. We have to look into every lead that we had. So, because then you, I think, do you think there might be a perception that things are kind of done because you have found him, but you're still correct. I mean, now it's just a matter of um, you know, going through uh, the evidence we have once again uh, for certain people, you know, such as the DA's office, other people to review, you know, the thousands of pages of documents uh, that have been assembled during this investigation. And then going forward from there, so it's a it's a pretty laborious task. Are they still going through those tens, thousands of you know, thousands of video clips, or those have all gone the ones that came in initially? I know that they were. Yeah, yeah, I don't know the status of those exactly, so I can't really speak to that. Okay, and do you still have investigators working daily? Yeah, throughout the week, correct. Yeah, and now it's been mostly hand in hand with the district attorney's office. So, and no timeline when there might be anything. Can't speak that to that right now just there's other things going on in the community that, that you're have to deal with but well num elijah was not finding him was number one Correct. Still Correct. Became, right i mean Correct. we found him yeah so now, it, now because much more the investigative team solely is working on things as opposed to maybe they're working on part of the investigation and then we have you know searches here i mean obviously 
those aren't taking place anymore because they're not needed at this point. Um, more evidence somewhere, it potentially could be, we don't know. Um, but, um, you know, we feel what we have at this point is, is um, good for our investigation, so. What have you guys learned from this investigation? Uh, there's been a lot, a lot we've learned. Um, obviously, once this is all uh, said and done, there'll be a, a review of, you know, what went well, what went wrong, that type of thing. Um, Cause I think you can always improve no matter, no matter what. I think uh, overall the feedback we've gotten from other agencies, um, you know, from the federal and the state level has been, you know, things went very well. Um, but there's always things we can improve upon. Um, I think, um, yeah, there'll be a number of things, but I, I don't know. I can't really speak to those right now. But once, once it's all yeah. wrapped up. We, okay. We've certainly been taking notes on it and, and learning from the process because this has been a new process for all of us. Um, most agencies, regardless of size, don't necessarily have to go through something like this. So this is going to be a unique thing. So Yeah, it's something that you're, I, guess, I don't want to say career defining, but something that. Sure. And we certainly hope nobody has to go through this again. Uh, but uh, if they do, we're hoping maybe they can learn from, you know, what went well and what didn't. Did you ever really think he was a missing child or that it wasn't? What it what it was reported to be from the very beginning. Uh, I can't speak to that. I can't speak to that. Sorry. Are you? Do you guys do check ins, peer check ins with each other because this has sort of sure. affected the? Yeah. So our department has um, a contracted counselor that we work with. Uh, at times we have mandated meetings with them. Uh, when it's up to the staff member, the officer, to if they want to speak to them, they can. If they if they don't, that's completely up to them. But we do give them the opportunity. Uh, we do check in with our staff. Uh, we have a, a chaplain program. We also use our chaplains for speaking with our officers um, or anybody in the community that, that needs your assist assistance, really. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry. Um, so those things are in place. Um, once this is all over, I'm sure there'll be several debriefs in different capacities. Um, but throughout, we've always been monitoring, you know, if people are doing okay with things, if they're not, um, then we're trying to give them the help that they need. Uh, but I think our staff is, is very aware. Uh, we've been always very open as far as if they need to see somebody, no questions asked. Here's, you know, who you can see and go from there so um, but everybody functions differently everybody has their own their own uh, levels of resilience and uh, we just want um, you know our staff to know that we're there for them if, if whatever they need so yeah I mean it's emotional I mean the chief certainly. at the news conference certainly. announcing the positive identification got I mean choked up because yeah, there was certainly tear shed throughout this yeah, yeah. And it's okay yeah, I think he's what you just reached out yep. Yep. to your, your department yeah I mean it being a, a small child is, is impactful as it is but then having um, dealt with this investigation for as long as, as we have. Um, I think that creates even more of a of a, a sense of uh, closure when it happens, and then it's, it's kind of a release at that point. Right. So as you said, not the mm -hmm. not the outcome you had hoped for. Correct. Correct. Are you surprised? That, I know they said it was going to be a, it would take some time for the identification mm -hmm. to come through. Are you surprised at how quickly they were able to identify? Or was it rushed through the through the crime lab to do it because it, the yeah. situation it was? Yeah. I mean, yes and no. Um, I didn't think it was going to take as 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 some people on the on the internet had stated it was going to take. I certainly didn't think it was going to take that long, um, but we also got the results a little bit quicker than I, than I thought. Um, I I figured we wouldn't get to the following week, um, so it was nice to have them earlier. Um, but it wasn't wasn't that shocking necessarily. How are the families doing? Yeah, I mean the the family. Uh, I can't speak. Um, you know, from what I've heard, it's similar emotions that we would have. Um, obviously stronger in the sense of this family member but um yeah i don't, I don't know the exact context we made with them since but i know context we made and um you know i hope that they're they're getting the closure that they need as well is there anything else you think's important that you can share <laughs> no not that i can share there's more so i guess <laughs> as we say stay tuned i guess i mean they're no. you're not letting this go you know probably. correct yeah this isn't the end of it so Large. Sorry about that. I had the music playing in the background so it alters the video slightly. Right? And I can't be had for copyright then. Because I didn't stop it so much during the during that video. Anyway, so you got that one. So we're going to play this game now.
Oh, there is the one thing I wanted to show you. But I can't. I can't find it now. Oh, I know it's wrong. I want to show you this one, but there was another one before this. <coughs> Turning now to whistle. Right. So, this is just going to show us part of the court here. Hold on. There's another one somewhere. Oh, I know which one it was. Right, this one. And this is where they're both, no, no, it's not that one, <laughs> not that one, sorry. Oh, where is it? This is it. I hope this is the one. We'll jump the bail. We, we know what the bail was. So we're going to start it from there. Okay. I am going to grant the request and set the $500,000 cash as requested with the conditions. No contact with the co-defendant. Uh, we specifically will indicate her name. It's Katrina Bauer. No contact with any person under the age of 18. And his initial appearance, as I noted earlier, will then be on Monday. That is October 21st at 1 p.m. in the courtroom for branch four, which is the one down the hall. Mr. Vang, you do have the right to be represented by a lawyer. Failure to appear, a warrant would be issued. I realize that might seem unnecessary to say, but I like to stay on my uh, speech, make sure I say everything. So that is your right and your obligation. Compliance with the bond conditions is also required or additional charges could be issued. With that, we are adjourned. Mr. Vang, you may leave the room. They'll bring in Ms. Bauer, I believe. So that's going to take a couple of minutes to switch over. Oh, oh. Oh. Okay, well, what's this thing? Sorry, I didn't mean to do that. Right, now. Um, why has he got a, a lawyer, an attorney, whatever? I thought he had one. Hmm. Person under the age of 18. And his initial appearance, as I noted earlier, will then be on Monday. That is October 21st at 1 p.m in the courtroom for branch four, which is the one down the hall. Mr. Vang, you do have the right to be represented by a lawyer. Failure to appear, a warrant would be issued. I realize that might seem unnecessary to say, but I like to stay on my uh, speech, make sure I say everything. So that is your right and your obligation. Compliance with the bond conditions is also required or additional charges could be issued. With that, we are adjourned. Mr. Vang, you may leave the room. They'll bring in Ms. Bauer, I believe. So that's going to take a couple of minutes to switch over. I don't know why he hasn't got a lawyer. Talk to you want. That didn't make sense. I thought you had one. Right, I'm just gonna just go for just a little bit. Oh, 
Okay. All right, our next individual then is Katrina Bauer here for a bail hearing regarding 24 CF 693. I will note that attorney, please correct me if I'm wrong. It is Amanda Grass. Amber Grass. Amber Grass. Okay, well, I tried without looking it up. Um, and even though she's in a situation that we are all probably too aware of, um, basic information for state of birth address, phone number that you want used. Um, anything before we hear from the DA? Um, I guess we'll leave that as is. We'll just verify the date of birth is December 9th, 1992. The jail is the current location, although she does have a home address that's in the complaint. All right, uh, turning it over to you. Mr. Lucita is asking for a $400,000 cash bail. Conditions are that she will include no contact with the co defendant, no contact with children under the age of 18. Her prior record is disorderly conduct of Winnebago County in 2011 a disorderly conduct in Allegheny County from 2016, some traffic related offenses. And then she does have an arrest out of state in Las Vegas um, from 2014, but I don't have a disposition on that, but it does show that she has some out of state contact. As I had indicated with the co-defendants um, bail argument, this is the most serious type of cases here involving the death of a small child, um, Ms. Bauer, allowed and even sent the victim to this residence for um, the boot camp or the discipline. She exactly, she's sanctioning her son now, so she's just as culpable days before he passed away for his the opportunity to remove him from that situation. Death. He was, uh, As Jesse is. Because if she hadn't sent him there, her little boy Elijah would still be alive. As the physical uh, issues with the standing and now treatment with the psychological and emotional terrorizing that also occurred, uh, the state feels that a significant cash bail is appropriate in this case. The emotion uh, there. Thank you. All right. I didn't read the charges into the record. Uh, we do have the two counts of obstructing for Ms. Bauer, chronic child neglect, specific uh, specified harm did not occur, and then felony child neglect. Attorney Gratz, go ahead, please. Thank you, Your Honor. We um, would note for the record that she is currently sitting on a $15,000 cash bond, but she does have no ability to post in the city. Be right time. back. She does have ties to the community and has been a lifelong resident of Wisconsin. All right. Well, um, thank you. And much as I had said for Mr. Bang, the community is encouraged to remember presumed innocence until proven guilty when the evidence is all heard and a decision is rendered. Uh, that is when punishment occurs. This is not that phase of the trial or the proceedings. However, I am aware of that cash bond and her inability to post and the unwillingness of the court to reduce that to date. I don't see that that is likely to change. However, each matter has to be looked, if not in a silo, at least looked at separately and considered. These charges are extremely serious. and recognition um, of the death of this young child does need to be given. I'm going to set the cash bail as uh, $400,000 as requested with the conditions, strict no contact with Jesse Vang with any other person under the age of 18, except as permitted for her child. Is that still being allowed for other child? We're working with the other child. So do you want an exception now or not? I don't think she should be seeing her other child. I'm sorry. She's got charges against her for leaving her. Right. I believe it that way. Ah, I know it's going to be um, something that will be dealt with going forward as well. And I don't know enough about this other child situation to try to craft anything at this time. So that seems appropriate. All right. So I will make it strictly any child under the age of 18. The initial appearance for Ms. Bauer, as for Mr. Bang, is being set for Monday. Right, so, that was that. I did click on something, didn't I? And it went to something else, didn't it? So, let's see if this is it. Yeah, this might be the one.
I see which one this one's for. I don't know. It doesn't have a date on me. All right, Attorney Grass, can you hear me? Um, if I can find the date on me. I can. And Attorney Lebrie? Yes, Judge. One day ago. Uh, Good morning. The matter set today for an arraignment. Uh, it looks like the state has filed an information uh, earlier today. Uh, Attorney Grass, have you received that document? I have, Your Honor. And do you uh, waive reading? Yes, it does reflect the same terms that are in the criminal complaint, so we would leave any formal reading or jurisdiction or other objections that enter not guilty. So he's right. got a new attorney now, a new lawyer. We did discuss that and she is not. All right, the not guilty please will be received and offer deadline attorney Labrie. December 20th. All right, December 20th for the offer deadline and then we'll get you a scheduling conference date. That's good. I'm sorry, right? All right, Attorney And that's uh, Friday, Gina Barra Court. February 6th at 9 a.m. Does so February 6th at 9 a.m. work for the parties for a scheduling conference by Zoom? It does. Judges and counsel, we have a following week. When was that? February the 6th? Or 26th? Copy the 6th, doesn't it? Because 26th. Uh, that would be February 13th at 9 p.m. Mm. That's fine. Thank you. I'm not available on the 13th. February 12th at 10.30 a.m. That's fine. That works. All right, that'll be the date time then of the scheduling conference by Zoom. Uh, Ms. Bauer, the December 20th offer deadline is not an actual court date. That's just the date by which the state is to provide your attorney with an offer to resolve your case. Um, is there anything else needed, Attorney Labrie? So February 12th is the court date. Right? All right, that's Attorney Grass. Yes, Your Honor, we had um, at the initial bond hearing discussed um, looking at the no contact provision so that Katrina would be able to have contact with her daughter. Um, so I would ask that the court consider that. That was previously amended. In the I don't think she should have contact with her daughter. I'm sorry. Uh, that it would just allow oh, no supervised visit. For She's got charges against her for leaving her daughter in a car on a very cold night. No heating in the car, nothing. Uh, daughter's got all is autistic or something like that. Right to the other parties, and at this point, they don't want um, contact between the two. If the court is going to modify the bail, I would just ask that you can modify it to contact only if approved through the judge hearing. Uh, isn't that what you're asking for, Attorney Grass? It is. All right. Um, Based on that, then, uh, the court will grant Attorney Grass's request uh, for contact with uh, Ms. Bauer's daughter, uh, only uh, if it's in compliance with the chip order. Um, anything else, Attorney Grass? No, thank you. Attorney Libri? No, thank you. All right, with that, then, we are adjourned. You may disconnect. Thank you. <coughs>
this bank. Yeah, this is the news bank. The news. Turning now to Wisconsin, where the mother of three-year-old Elijah Vu pleaded, pleaded rather not guilty to charges in connection to her son's death. Katrina Bauer appeared over Zoom from jail during today's hearing. Her defense attorney entered the not guilty plea to two felony charges and two misdemeanors. It looks like the state has filed an information uh, earlier today. Uh, attorney Gratz, have you received that document? I have, Your Honor. Yeah, this is okay. So she's pleaded not guilty and she's devastated that her little boy was found unalived. Right, okay, Katrina. We all believe you. Not. You know what I mean? Why would she tell... If, if, I, if she left her son with that vile piece of ish, why would she be sticking up for him, in a way, by saying, don't talk to the police, do this, do that, you know what I mean? Why would she be doing that? After her son had gone missing, I'd be ripping into him, I don't care if he's some gang leader or not, I'd be ripping into him. Where's my flipping son? You know what I mean? But there wasn't, she was just dead. Dead in the eyes. Right, so. Let's just get rid of this. So, that's the update so far on Elijah Vu. Right. Nothing much really happens in these courts. Court hearings, nothing. And it won't until it starts, until it actually goes to court. I think she's playing the victim. I think that's the way they're going down with this, that she didn't know about Elijah Vu being on the live. That's, that's the path her lawyers are obviously going to be taking. That she had no nothing to do with it. She knew nothing about her son being on the live. The first thing she knew was when she found out that her son was missing. Wow, well, I'm sorry, Katrina. As a mother, you're a piece of ish. And I don't believe a word you say. You could have helped a lot sooner in finding your son. But you didn't. You didn't. Right. So, and all those months, your son was lying in a field, in a in a hole or a ditch or something. And you could have, could have helped a lot sooner. Because she knew. She knew. Anyway, I'm going to leave it at that. It is only a quick live. As I said, I do want to do a video as well, but it will not. The video I'm doing is about what's happening in the UK at the moment. With our government, the police, and the media. Yeah. So, I will do a video on that. But I have to be careful. I cannot post it on YouTube. And I definitely can't post it on Twitter. Because even though we've got freedom of speech on Twitter, or X, our government don't look at... Our government doesn't look like... I don't know. You say anything against the government, or anything against the police, you know what I mean? They will have me locked up in a cell for like two years. Anyway, so keep an eye out for that video. The link will be to my Discord. And um, so if you want to watch that, I'll put the description in along, along with the link. So then it's up to people if they go to my Discord or not. No, it's not actually on X. And it's not on Facebook. It'll just be the link. And it'll be a link in my community tab on my YouTube. Anyway, 
thank you for all for watching if you got to this point please give this video a like please leave me a comment what are your feelings on this case do you believe the mother that she's devastated hmm I do try to stay neutral, but in this, these cases are very hard, especially when you've got parents like her. So, I'm going to leave it at that, and let's just put my closing music on for a minute. And I will see you, hopefully I'll be back on later, if not... It'll be tomorrow, my usual time, 8pm. So until then, bye. Stay safe and be good.